All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to continue our look at some features and some ideas that you need to be aware of when you're describing the data that you find in your bivariate exploration. And today we're going to be talking about other features and specifically groups. And then we're also going to talk about what are called lurking variables. And both are pretty easy ideas. And um, the NZ Grapher will pretty much do your groups for you. You still have to talk about them a little bit. And then we'll talk about lurking variables. And that's pretty much uh, just describing effects. So here we go. So if you look in your book, page 58, remember that your data, for example, this data is about the fish. There were different kinds of fish that were caught in that, in that group, yes? And so groupings are simply subgroups of your original data. So we were looking at all the fish caught and the, and the relationship between length of, of the, the fish length and fish mass, yes? But if you think about breaking that up, then you can talk in more detail about specific subgroups of your data. So here what they've done is they simply use the graphing tool to change all of those dots into specific symbols. What you're going to do is you're going to use NZ Grapher and change the color. So, for example, the blue cod there are a diamond. Notice that the, all the blue cod are clustered down here at the bottom. So, right? The uh, snapper or the, the X's, they're over here, grouped together here. But they're also spread out. So, look at the, like, so you could no notice that the snapper seem to have the most variation, don't they? They're the, they come from the smallest weight, and then they go really high, don't they? Then um, kingfish, kingfish are those stars, and you see those are only occur at the very highest. So, they, so they, they seem to be the heaviest fish and the biggest fish that were caught in the group. So you can look at, I look at things like this and talk about the different groups of data. So remember that we looked at that data, and we'll do, and we'll do this with that data we had where the mother's mother's age and birth weight, we'll look at that data again, and we'll see if you see any clusters or groups. Now, then you're, you're going to have to be looking at these groups. You don't have to talk about them all, but you're going to make some observations about at least one of them. So you could pick the one that occurs most frequently, or the one that seems to uh, really represent the curve, or whatever it is you're thinking about. So just have a glance here at what they talk about. Blue cod have a maximum size of about 55 centimeters, and their mass appears to increase more rapidly in the relation to the ship to, to their length than some of the other fish. Right? Just a simple observation based on looking at that one group. Snapper have a maximum size of about 68 centimeters, and their mass also appears to increase more rapidly in relation to their length than some of the other fish. Right? So you're just going to be talking about s simple differences between the groups. Now, you do not have to do this. This is where they've just taken the group and created a new graph using each group. You will not need to do that. But if you do, and you do this, and then show, talk a little something about the model and about, how, about that model, how it varies or it rep is representative of your whole group of data, that is showing a lot of, st a lot of statistical knowledge and will boost your grade. Okay? You can get excellence without the new graph, though. Right? But if you think you're shaky in one area, maybe you need to bump, bump it up in another area. Right? Besides that, NZ Grapher does all the graphs for you. So what I want to do is I want to go to NZ Grapher real quickly just so that you can see what this looks like. So here we're going to do our scatter graph. We were talking about mother's age versus birth weight. We wanted a regression line, so there you are. And then what we can do on those is see where down here where it says color by? So we can color by mother's age. And now the different groups of ages are different colors. Now again, remember we said that this is not very good data because there's not a strong relationship here. But you can see what's happening. What seems to be happening? In the orange dots represent mother's Around 15? Holy moly. Okay. Can you imagine? All right. Can you imagine? How old, are, how old are you guys? 
Yeah, that's true. I know I'm not appalled by the fact that it happens. I'm I'm very aware that it happens. I was just appalled thinking, can you imagine being 15 and having a baby to care for? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm way over here, way off beyond the chart, and I don't think I'm ready yet. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So here we go. We got a we've got orange here. Yes, it wasn't a judgmental thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound that way. All right, we got this orange grouping of, of those, and you see that. If you think of this orange grouping, they're pretty much representative of all the, from the bottom all the way to the top, right? Doesn't seem to have any effect. But if you look at the green grouping, what do you notice about the green grouping? They go all, there's a lot of them. They also grow all the way from the bottom to all the way to the top. So it's, it's the most spread out group of data. Yeah. Okay. And the most of them are there. But did you expect that to happen? What is that green grouping? Around 25, right? Between 20 and 25. You would expect that to be a really popular age to be having babies, right? So so that makes perfect sense. And everything that could happen pretty much does happen in that group. Okay? So very simplistic. Don't get carried away. Just see if you can find one group especially that is especially interesting. Right? And then write something about it. In comparison to the other groups, though. You know, you need to make sure you say the 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 group group around the that's clustered around the age twenty five has weights in the lowest category, and it also contains um, the weight. It's not quite the largest. The largest baby was over here, <laughs> All right at forty five. So, right? Okay. So we keep it very keep it very simple, and you don't even have to replicate the graph. You just need to talk about the data. Okay, and we're going to look at how it's titled when we, when we get there. All right, now let's go back to our book. And we'll talk about our second topic for the day. Guys, the second thing we're going to talk about is correlation and causality. Now you have to be really careful and you must know what each one means. And you cannot confuse them because this is the point where most of you, if you're going to get into trouble, are going to get into trouble. You're going to say that something causes something else because the graph looks like it says that. And it's very rarely true. Here's my advice to you in stats. Never use any absolutes. This causes that. Almost impossible to prove even though it looks very much like it is, right? It might look like that for your group, but do you think it look like, looks like it for every group? No. Okay, so be very careful about using those. But that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So if two variables are correlated, that means that as one changes, another changes. And this is one that's very well documented, and we'll talk about it. Ice cream consumption is associated with the number of drownings. In other words, as, as ice cream consumption goes up, Drownings go up. Yes. So do you think eating ice cream causes you to drown? No. Okay, so there's, there's something that, that statistics is proving is correlated, but it's not causal. Now, here's, a, here's an example of a causal, guys, causal relationship. How much exercise you do affects your fitness. Yes, yes. Would you be, expect to be more fit if you did more exercise? Yes, a visual aid up here, no exercise, no fitness. All right, there are several factors that can cause some change in a response variable, however. Is exercise the only thing that you can do to improve your fitness? No, someone who's fit probably also does what? Eats well, gets enough sleep, right? Okay, right, takes care of their mental and physical well-being, you bet. Okay, so just because two variables are correlated does not mean one causes the other. Think ice cream and drownings, and we're going to look at that in more detail in just a moment. There are lots of things, reasons what, why you can have correlation. So look at this little graphic here. They were looking at student performance, and, this, and the Wall Street Journal says that students who don't have breakfast don't do as well on tests. That's true. That's not true. It's true. Yes, but do you think that's, guys, come on though, 
Do you think that's the only thing? If you don't eat breakfast, that means you're going to do badly on the test? No. Not a lot of people do well and don't do well on a test. So when they went back to look at the data, they also saw that poverty also leads to low test scores and absent being absent leads to low test scores. But if you look at all of those things, do you think these things are related? If you're poor, you may not be able to eat breakfast and you're also likely to be absent more. Right. So there are lots of causes. So just because something is correlated, like no having no breakfast, doing badly on the test, that does not mean that having no breakfast is causing you to do badly. So you cannot get carried away when you're saying these things. There can be multiple, well, there almost always are multiple reasons for something happening. Yes? So be careful. So look at how they wrote about this. Here's a net, you asked about this, guys. Listen. It's likely that students' performance is influenced in part by whether the student has had breakfast. However, other factors can include student performance or poverty and absenteeism. So you, it's likely that it contributes, but there are other factors, and then list a couple of them. Yeah? So is the length of the boat the reason why they caught the biggest fish? No, because remember we had that one big fish caught on the small boat or in shallow water or whatever it was. So no, not always. So just mention that. Okay? So here's your, as some exercises. You're going to be doing just that. Look at what, look, let's look at what you're supposed to be doing. Performance in sport is positively associated with athletic ability. It is likely that performance in sports is influences, influenced part by, in part by what? What are we measuring here? Athletic ability. However, other factors that are likely to influence performance in sport are what do you think? Nutrition. What good sleep. nutrition? Sleep. Good good sleep. Uh, training. training and practice. Yeah, probably even more important. Yeah, right yeah, having the right equipment. So there are lots of factors, and as long as you can justify it, or, or as long as it's not too out there, okay, then and I can read it and say, yeah, that works then that's all you have to say. Okay? All right, so you're going to be working on those in a minute. Now let's talk about this other, the other thing, which are called lurking variables. You need to describe and see if you have what are called lurking variables. And the ice cream is a great one. So a lurking variable is any variable that is not in the data set, but which is associated changes with the original variable. So something that's changing your variables, right? So, but not being in the data set. For example, the number of drownings is associated with ice cream consumption, but we know that eating more ice cream is not going to cause you to drown. The, what, so what is the lurking variable there that is actually causing that to happen? What happens? When do you eat most ice cream? In the winter? When it's hot. Yeah. When do you go swimming most? Summer. The same when it's hot. So... At the, so what is really the lurking variable that's causing this relationship? The temperature. It's hot, right? So more people are eating ice cream. More people are in the water. If more people are in the water, more people are going to drown, right? You're not likely to drown if you don't go in the water. <laughs> so the lurking variable here is the temperature, okay? So look to see your relationship. It, guys, come on. Your your two variables may look like one is going up as the other goes up, right? Which looks like it's having a positive thing, but they may not be related at all. So you have to stop and ask yourself, is there something happening behind the scenes that I don't see that's causing my relationship to look like a relationship, right? Okay. Now, we're hopefully going to choose a good enough data set that that won't happen, but you must... Think about it, and you must talk about it. Okay, so it's in your in your report. So let's look at how that's done. Yes, it's in your one note. All right, here we go. So let's talk about the groupings. You'll see that wasn't very. It's, it wasn't a very big section. It might be poss possible to identify different groups within your data set and get them to plot them in different colors. So you just use the color efforts, and then you'll discuss differences in the groups. One difference is fine. So you might want find the one that has the most, or you might say that the data was the color, all the colors were evenly spread out, or something. Make one, guys, make one observation about a grouping. Right? And you're gonna do that by just changing the colors of the dots. Okay? Now, 
You're also going to talk about correlation and causality. So talking about the relationship and lurking variables, right? In young children, you would, you would find a correlation between the length of their foot and their spelling ability. But do you think that the length of foot makes you a better speller? No. What happens to us as, we, as our feet get bigger? We are... You're a, yeah, you're growing and aging. And hopefully, <laughs> what happens to your spelling ability as you get older? It gets better. So really, what's our lurking variable then? Age. age. Right? It's really age that's causing your feet to grow and age that's causing you to get better at spelling. So be careful. Now, here, this is going back to, guys, come, going back to that London Underground example. It is likely that the number of stations on London Underground is influenced in part by the length of the line. However, another factor that could affect the number of stations is the distance from the center of London. Because you're not going to need a lot. You're going to have a lot clustered right near the center, and then you're going to have a lot further away, right? So distance makes a difference, doesn't it? Okay? Now, you could argue that something else is happening other than how long the line is, but I really think that that's a strong relationship. Okay? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, our, do those few pages so you can write down a few of these. Again, notice how short and to the point they are. That's what we want from you. And then next time we meet, we're going to begin the conclusion, which is the make or break section. Right? We've talked a lot about specific items that have to be there, but the conclusion is the most important one and also the place where most people go wrong. So be ready to get stuck in on that. All right.